It's my pleasure and honor to welcome Abhijit Doron Iyer Mitra for one more conversation on what is happening on the or at the line of actual control. Abhijit, namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Thank you for having me, Shri Guru. Joy Makali. Abhijit, this is now uh, close to six months since the first big skirmish happened in June in Galwan. And what I wanted to know from you is there have been series of these talks going back and forth. There have been some talks that we've had. We've had hangouts. One of the things that we had left and on this particular topic was that India had gained a strategic position in the southern part of Pangong So Lake. Now, there is a new area that is of concern, which is Depsang area. Perhaps you can walk our viewers through how this Depsang is First of all, critical. Second of all, where has that been? Whose position has that been since 1993? And how do you see that play out in these uh, talks? Sure. So, see, we need to separate these things because the macro here is China's uh, policies. We still don't understand what this thing is. That for little pieces of land, they are willing to give up so much diplomatic capital. Okay, uh, and create unnecessary fights. But anyway, I mean, let's take that as a given because there's no point trying to analyze it. Okay, uh, because when uh, India, according to them, behaves well, they still grab territory. When according to them, India doesn't behave well, they still grab territory. It, it is a thankless task. It, it, China ultimately is like Nazi Germany. Appeasement will get you more aggression. Uh, uh, resistance will also get you aggression. Okay, there is no way of getting out of that. And this is something we need to understand very, very clearly, which I don't think this government understands because it is uh, so clearly compromised to Chinese interests. Number one. Number two. Let's look at these two things separately uh, because they are part, even though they are part of this Chinese plan that Indians don't seem to get, but Hitler would have gotten very easily because it was his uh, basic uh, this thing. Uh, what is happening in Spangur is they are trying to come through, send tanks and things like that through a plane. It's a very easy to go plane. It's optimized for tank movement. There are two planes like this, uh, two valleys like this. One is Spangur Lake and the banks around it. And the second is a southern ridge valley direct from uh, uh, Pangong. Right? So Spangur is very uh, close to Pangong, south of Pangong. This is Pangong up here. Now, what is happening is they are trying to come here and we are trying to stop them there because if we stop them here, uh, they can't get access to this valley. And if they get this access to this valley, they then have unfettered access to the south bank of Pangong Lake, which is very, very dangerous. We don't want to let them do that. In the north of Pangong Lake, uh, the northern uh, uh, banks of Pangong Lake, what has happened is in uh, the war, they had come all the way up to finger four so-called foxhole point. After that, they settled at some place around finger five, but definitely we know for a fact that in 1998, when we diverted troops for the Kargil war, they came right up to finger four, set up a road out there. It was a track, but it was more than a track because you know they uh, uh, sort of put rocks on it and made it uh, 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 an easily motorable. Uh, compared to what it was, it became much more easily motorable. And since then, you know, like, you know, in all property law, possession is nine tenths of the law. So if you've built a road out there, you effectively own it. And which is why they've always been able to uh, control right up to finger four. Uh, the status quo right now is that they have withdrawn to finger five, their uh, forward posts, at least the heavy forward posts, the lighter forward posts in the hills over uh, Pangong, uh, North Lake remain as they are. In fact, they are building tents almost exactly where Google Maps marks the line of actual control. Okay, so they are actually moving to Google Maps in that sense, if you want to look at it. So that Google Maps line of actual control is a fairly accurate map in the Chinese imagination of things. 
right so this is what is happening in pango pangong and south of it in spangur in spangur what has happened is we have also got the heights and we have mined the heights around it so that they can't even come and take the heights if they come to try to take the heights these mines will go up and they don't want to and you know demining putting mines is a lot easier than removing mines putting mines takes 24 hours removing mines can take up to 24 years right and you can still lose people in the process so that is what has happened out there and we are holding off against them the balance of forces is equal pretty much so there's no real danger out there right now number one number two let us come to depsang now depsang what has happened is given the geography of the place it's i i can't describe it to you like this because it's a series of uh, you know, uh, relatively shallow uh, uh, valleys and things like that, not particularly tough, uh, uh, not particularly tough terrain. What has happened is Depsang was the main point of Chinese ingress in the last 15 to 20 years. Okay, the line of actual control as far as we understand it was about 12 kilometers on their side, which over since 19... Uh, Look, I only have satellite imagery from nineteen uh, from two thousand and one, which That's is fine. when commercial satellite imagery started getting uh, available. So I can't talk about ninety three to two thousand one, but doing a time series from two thousand one to now, I can tell you that in Depsang, the most forward point where they are today, the Chinese, that post was established in twenty ten. Okay, it was reinforced sometime around 2013, but they have not come beyond that post that was established in 2013. Okay, so on one hand, what these people are trying to say that there's a 12 kilometer incursion. Yes, it may be correct. It, it, it probably is a 12 kilometer uh, incursion. I can't really say with the uh, 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 very rough uh, line of actual control that we have from the CIA, from the declassified CIA map. Uh, nobody seems to have a, uh, uh, a Indian map of the thing. But that incursion happened in 2010. Okay, it did not happen in 2014. It did not happen in 2019. It did not happen in 2020. So when you're talking about status quo ante, what are these people talking about? Do you want the BJP government to reverse the losses that we suffered under the UPA government? Which means you're basically trying to chirkofy a war which I don't support. So the best you can do is retain the current line, whatever it is. Finger four at Foxhole Point at Pangong. This uh, Spangur, the uh, Spangur Gap and Depsang to where it is right now. Okay, because if you want to push them back to uh, uh, whatever existed prior to 2010, you are going to have to accept uh, fighting casualties, fatalities. That's um, it. Quick uh, look at uh, Dalati Big Oldie area. That is uh, Ladakh and it is very close to Karakoram Highway 5. Remember my map correctly. Uh, the landing and taking off of uh, planes, IAF aircraft in DBO, evidently there was some danger to it because the Chinese have come so close that they can launch AA, anti aircraft missiles. To bring these uh, landing aircrafts or taking off aircrafts down. Where do things stand on that, uh, Abhijit? Look, um, I don't understand where these people are getting it because, uh, see, there is no evidence of actual physical infrastructure out there. Remember, the Chinese, given the thing out there, the Chinese are the Pakistanis. Like happened in Kargil, remember, you can climb you, uh, a shoulder fired anti aircraft missile takes only three, four people to carry it, all the components of it. So mm -hmm. you can climb up to the hilltop, even as a guerrilla operation and bring down one of those planes. Right. So I am not seeing any infrastructure that has developed out there that threatens the Daulat Blake Oldie. The guerrilla threat to it or the commando threat to it was always there, which has neither increased nor decreased for the time being. And uh, that is an excellent uh, overview of what's happening. And last time we spoke with uh, Abhijit, we did speak about what is happening in Arunachal Pradesh. And I don't think there is any changes unless you would like to update that one, uh, uh, Abhijit. Uh, we have sort of taken a fairly good look 
at what is happening on the line of actual control. I must remember, I must remember to tell everybody now that LAC is a line in the sand that neither side wants to agree and it is it's viewed as something that is convenient and uh, therefore you know you, you start out you don't have a definitive line all you can call about is a delta got gain or loss and uh, interestingly enough now the opposition cannot tell BJP that they have ceded territory when it was in fact them uh, under their watch that India lost this area so we have to wait and see how this plays out but then what is the point of these talks back and forth Abhijit? Why, what does India gain by keeping on talking to them? I know you have a slightly different perspective on this than I do. Please, uh, what do you think is going to happen? So see the talks that are happening now are not about territory. They are trying to link we are linkage is that your military buildup equals our military buildup. If you want us to reduce our military buildup, you reduce your military buildup. We are linking buildup to buildup. They are linking build Chinese buildup to Indian infrastructure. If you want Chinese in, uh, buildup to reduce, military buildup to reduce, you must stop building infrastructure. So we are saying screw you to them. And, you know, it is in our interest to go on prolonging these talks because, you know, the infrastructure is coming up at an amazing pace. Right. So the longer these talks continue, the more we would have mirrored Chinese infrastructure in the region. And that will be very good for us. Uh, last question. Um, the Chinese are trying to dam the Brahmaputra so that they can deny water downstream to India, Bangladesh and so on. How do you think India should react to this? I mean, this is all Tibet, Tibet, not... So, so here's the thing. This is what Galwan is, was about, remember? They were trying to put up some kind of a dam and we went in there to smash it. Uh, 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 th th that was what led to the Galwan thing and it was, it, it was showing China that you've crossed a red line. You can't keep doing this, otherwise you're going to get smashed. Uh, as for the rest of the Brahmaputra, we are not actually seeing any hard proof that they are diverting water. Because remember, if they divert water to us, we can always divert water from Pakistan. Okay, we can block the Indus and things like that, claiming we haven't received our share. So you're not going to receive your share. You talk to the Chinese. Hmm? Uh, ditto with Bangladesh. China's relations with Bangladesh in that sense allow us to hold the Chinese hostage with terms of uh, uh, waters. That said, we also need to be very, very clear. The rainwater is caught on the Indian side. If you actually go to the uh, Chinese side of the Brahmaputra, it is absolutely arid. That is not the rainward side. That is the leeward side. It is too high and too dry for precipitation to happen. And it is on the wrong side of the mountains from where the uh, moisture laden winds come in. So that happens south. So on the India side of the border, which is where Cherapunji and all those places are, you know, the rainiest uh, uh, dense dense forest absolutely but what happens is the summer glacial melt that comes in from uh, 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 Tibet yeah. is very important in recharging all the aquifers in Assam uh, in that entire Brahmaputra uh, down river I don't think the recharge of the aquifers happens further down but at least about two three hundred kilometers south of the Himalayas it would recharge the aquifers so that is where that uh, uh, thing coming in from uh, this place is important. So right now we are not seeing anything, but rest assured we are keeping a watch on their water uh, diversion. Then the lack of water diversion projects in uh, 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 Tibet with a Hawkeye. Remember, we were the first people, me and my colleague Detresfa, we were the first people on Twitter to report that there was a water diversion that had happened at Galwan. And if any water diversion happens, just trust me, we are not government stooges to deny it. We are going to be the first people to say there has been a water diversion. Wonderful uh, update and uh, insights on things that, you know, we don't get to hear or read. And uh, thank you once again, Abhijit, for taking time from your uh, leisure to talk to us. And uh, viewers, please do subscribe to our channel. It excites Abhijit to see that uh, Pigurus is doing well. 
and uh, he's always happy to come and share his thoughts on our channel and we want more people more of us to try and uh, listen to this uh, a time that's spent on pguru is always time well spent please do subscribe to our channel and also donate to our channel abhijit thanks once again for coming and sharing your thoughts on our channel namaskar joy makali please like share subscribe and comment feel free to abuse me as well thank you very much